right, so me and Jack Chapman are here on site in Northeast Washington, D.C., working on our final project documentary. Um, this is our third time here, and we have no interviews with any homeless people. I've been in communication with headquarters, managers, social workers, as much as they've let us on. Um, nothing has happened. We've got, I think, one shot of Jack walking in a hallway. Um, I guess it's a learning process. I mean, I've done as much as I can to, uh, to set this up. Do you think that I could interview them uh, you know, somewhere in the building, not not necessarily their rooms, but uh, you know, just like different areas. Obviously, a lot of these people have very sensitive pasts, um, you know, street life, dealing with drugs, homelessness, uh, rejected from families. So, I mean, this is the stuff that I wanted to get on camera, and uh, and you know present in a way that's, that's constructive. I think fundamentally that there are two reasons why a lot of people are reluctant to be interviewed or become subjects in film. Uh, one is that the, their exposure to exploitative works on television and YouTube and Hulu and wherever, a lot of people take advantage of a lot of other people. I think the other is that in order for a filmmaker to engage in making a film, talking to people, the filmmakers forget the critical factor of gaining trust. I guess we're learning uh, how much really pre-production is involved in documentary filmmaking, so... If I add a part to the consent form that says, um, you know, we will not include... If I were to record them like in the laundry room and made sure that no one else was in the shot... If you conceive of the word expert as describing the psychologist, the social worker, the people who run the shelters, right. then you're doing a disservice to the people who are actually the experts. The real experts are the people who have to have to rely on the shelters. They're the experts. Right now, our biggest suggestion is to buy a couple of pizzas and offer them to the homeless people to give interviews to us. I need an area to Jack and I decided to offer the pizzas we ordered to a group of homeless people we found outside of the Emory shelter. We're doing documenting for your grades, so yeah, for a grade. We're doing it for a film class. Um, we just want to see what life is like out here, you know. A lot of people don't take the time to see what's going on, so. It's rough out here. Easy. Not easy. Not easy. It took me 20 something years to get off paper. These guys out here, did you see all uh, my friends? Here's a nine and a half. Here's a bag. At a certain point, they have fallen short of their glory. No, don't, don't film me, sir. My name is Derek Wood. I'm out here, me and my Hello. wife. We've been together for 11 years. Everybody within this homeless thing, man, they, they they love each other, they take care of each other. Well, it's somewhat peaceful at night, it's rat infested. Mm -hmm. uh, I can take you over there where this woman sleeps up under the trees with the rats. Wow. Rats this big. We, when we get up in the morning, because uh, we have to be up a certain time in the morning, bag our stuff up take it over to the park across the street yeah. and put it in the bushes so that it'll be there later That's your spot. In the evening. Yeah. Yes. It's not what you have, it's the love you have in your heart. You know? Achieve what we people need is to have change in life. Just to get a chance to get to a certain point where we can have that sense of 
responsibility to do for ourselves. Then the little idiotic things that we'd be doing on the street. Right, right. Wouldn't happen. I would really love to invite you down here to 6 in Pennsylvania Avenue. 90 to 100 people. I'm going to take you to one spot to the next to the next. Yeah. But see, I know them all. We got these Barack Obama uh, posters. We got judges, lawyers, doctors. To sign this because what we're going to do is go down to White House and get on the news team and have some kind of recognition. We're doing something for Barack Obama. We want to see if he can do something. Yes. Come on, you got me? You hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you guys going to promise me y'all going to come down tomorrow? Are you free at 5? We decided to meet Derek the next day so that he could show us his life on the streets as well as the lives of some of his homeless friends. I'm introducing uh, Mr. Robert Anderson, a good friend of mine. Uh, he has a little story he'd like to uh, share with you guys. My name is Robert J. Anderson and I'm from Oak Park, Illinois. November the 16th, my door was literally cut down with a saw by the police and fire department of Oak Park, Illinois. And they said they were doing a wellness check. In reality, they were looking for someone half my age that was sexually harassing women in Chicago. <laughs> so when, when you told these guys you guys got the wrong guy, what did they say to you? They said, Chicago police said, you the man. You Robert Anderson, right? I said, yeah, but that's how many more thousands in the state of Illinois? They said, no, they said, you the one. And if they come for you, we gonna come and get you out of your apartment. I got a tip of what to do. And that was to barricade my door. <laughs> but after I barricaded my door, and they couldn't get in, the police officer said, well, you leave us no choice but to cut it down. I said, come on in. <laughs> so they took me in an ambulance anyway, with no clothes on, just a t-shirt and my undies. They took me to my hospital, and they checked, my hospital checked me out in the emergency room. They said, there's nothing wrong with this man. What are you doing? This is... This man is the happiest man we have ever seen being a senior citizen. According to the FBI, when anyone break in on you for no apparent reason, they have committed a crime against you. But in this country, I cannot get a free attorney. But if I had done a crime against the government or against the city, then I can get a free attorney. But when you're victimized by the police, they will help you. So, this is where I actually keep my uh, Lenny the rest of the night. Uh, Park is rat infested. At night, a little later than this, they come out and see where various people with their belongings. This happens to be mine. That I take every night when I'm down here to take to and from across the street. So, um, we got about, probably about 14 or 15 people stay here. Yeah, one lady stays up under here. She we stays in there? Up under here. Over there. She sleeps yeah. in there? Yeah. Right here. Domain right there where there's multiple red holes. She sleeps up under here. She, she sleeps with rats? Them. Yes, and she feeds them by mouth. And where we're going right now is where uh, I put my linen down at night. Being as though my wife came before me, she's already put it down. So I'm going to show you where we stay. After the sun goes down. This is where <laughs> me and my wonderful wife. This looks pretty comfortable, man. I got my DVD play up under the cover. <laughs> so you, you feel a little more relaxed here than you would in like a homeless shelter, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. Homeless shelters have nothing, nothing. I've seen people go in there and get apartments and actually turn them into crack houses because they've been pressed by, by the guys that's already in the shelter. I mean, life is supposed to be cherished, man. You're supposed to. 
just embrace each other. If you see somebody sad, you're supposed to just, hey, my sister, brother, hey, let me give you a hug. Did anybody tell you that they love you today? If they didn't, I do. And that just seems to make people just, it just, it, it plants a seed down inside. If I'm doing pre-production, I have a script or I have a plan or treatment, whatever, it's a guide for exploring the particular arena that you're in, in reality. Instead of imposing your idea on the subjects, on the situation, you have to let go a lot of control in order to gain control of what your story ought to be.